are gearing up for Duke City and the humble Redwood Rollers about ready to kick off. And with that, woo! Well, we went from four minutes now to it's time for Derby. So let's do a quick rundown. We've got Humboldt Roller Derby, who is ranked 111th in the WFTDA standings. And we have number two, Bianca Swagger. Number 21, Zombie Stardust. That's their captain. Number 218, Purple Sticky Punch. Number 222, Too Legit. Number 239, Nacho Amiga. Did I say that right? Nacho Amiga. Amiga. Number 26, Atreyu. Number 37, Cast. Catastrophe. Number four, Ferocious Dimples. Number 420, Hot Box. Number 423, Peaches and Scream. Number 44, Rotten to Liqueur. Number five, PK Rowan. Number six, Barium. Number 700, Sprocket Rocket. And number 80, Mod Behavior. And representing the Duke City Muñecas Muertas in today's game, number 10, Bamf. Number 1013, Holly Seidel. Number 11, Killer Queen. Number 15, Harley Darlin. Number 17, Puns of Steel. Number 18, Eiffel Terror. Number 24, Smackillivery. I'm going to call them Smack. Number 311, Beat on a Brat. Number 464, Inducing Agony. Number 505, Swear and Marie, number five five Bo Derelict, number seven five Tamtrum, number eight zero Meep Meep, and number nine Kells Inferno. And with that, we are halfway through jam number one. Today we've got Humboldt in the white jerseys and Duke City in the black jerseys. And the ones with the stars are the jammers. The one with the stripes are the pivots. Got Everybody it. else is blockers. I am now officially caught up this morning. I think we've got it all figured out. Nicely done. Hopefully I have my life together this game. <laughs> it's good. All right, well, Meep Meep and Sprocket Rocket are your jammers. Sprocket Rocket, I would assume. Penalty box is clear. And Rocket takes the outside line for another pass. Looks like four more points for Humboldt. And meat being held up in the back here with a very strong wow. tripod. Yeah, from some Humboldt. great defense at the back of the pack by the Humboldt Redwood Rollers. These two teams very close in the WFTDA rankings uh, 111 and 110. So that's about as close as it gets. In fact, it can't get any closer. So we got Bo Derelict on the track for Duke City. Yeah, and it looks like our jammer is Atreyu for the Redwood Rollers. Atreyu trying to work against that tough defensive formation at the front, and there they go. Lead jammer status goes to Humble Atreyu. I like that name. I like that band. But it looks like Bo Derelict has made it out of their initial pass. Hopefully... Trying to come around and maybe score a few points before that is called. Yeah, Treyu knocked out to the inside, decides to call it off, and keeps that at a 2 nothing jam, the advantage to Humble. And we've got Banff for Duke City. Yeah, and a hot box jamming for the Humble Redwood Rollers. One, One skater from each team in the penalty box, so we've got an abbreviated pack for a few moments. A little more room for those jammers to do their thing. Everybody's huddled on the jammer line. Yeah, Duke City at the back of that formation, doing their best to hold back Hotbox. And there goes Banff, lead jammer for Duke City. 13 to 8 on the scoreboard in favor of Humble early, early here in the first half. Whistles in the turn number two. It looks like, oh boy, the jammer for Humble is coming off the track. It looks like a cutting penalty. So Duke City with a power jam situation. 
but gives up that power jam situation for a cut. So they will sit, and Humble is being released from that penalty box. Swapping jammers little, in the penalty box. Little jammer do si do. Well, you. All right. A dosado. It's pronounced dosado. Is that a dosado? Okay, cool. Got it. And this pack is very well oh. stretched out between turns two and three, but Humboldt does make it out. But at this point, we have no lead. It is a full two minute jam. Yeah, hot box they had to release at the front when those blockers rolled out of play. Nice blocking up at the front by Duke City. They've got all four blockers trying to hold back Hotbox. Well, with a little hot, Banff makes it through turn four for four more points on that board. Yeah, nice work by Meep. Fancy footwork on the inside line. It's a two-on-one at the front, and Hotbox makes it through for another four points for Humble, and that is the end of the jam. So we've got Duke City with 19 uh, to Humble 17. I think we had a couple of random lead changes in there. Uh, with about 24 minutes left on this first period clock, We've got Meep out on the jammer line. Yeah, for... and two legit jamming for the humble Redwood Rollers in white. Duke City in the black uniforms with the green trim. And Humboldt's got one blocker and their pivot in the box. But their two blockers making good work of recycling Meep to the back while Humboldt's jammer too legit is being sent to the penalty box. Yeah, and it looks like Duke City wants to call it off right away and get their strategy together with the Humboldt jammer in the box. That's they may called want a power start. <laughs> power start. Power start. Power. It's very powerful. Bo Derelict taking the line as the only jammer at the beginning of the jam. With only having to face against... Nope, nope, nope. Bamp. They changed it on you. You spoke too soon. <laughs> and Humboldt's only got three blockers out there right now. Yeah, nice opportunity here for Duke City with two legit in the penalty box for the Redwood Rollers. And there it is, lead jammer goes to Duke City. They are in control of this jam. Let's see what they can do. Humboldt sending their pivot to the box as their, one of their blockers is released. That looks like it's Castastrophe headed to the sin bin. That's another four on the board for Banff. But wow. too legit coming out of that penalty box saying, you know, I'm going to give you a little shove to the outside. Yeah, nice work there by too legit forcing her out of bounds. And Some Duke City somewhere. calls it off before any more damage can be done by too legit. Great strategy out there by the Muñecas Muertas. Muñecas Muertas. And then you're still holding the lead by nine points because, hey, I did math. Very proud of myself. That's pretty good math. Very simple math. That's about yeah. all I can do. Holly Seidel on the line for Duke City. Looks like Sprocket Rocket jamming for the Redwood Rollers. One blocker from each team in the box to start. But Humboldt's pivot, it has been released already. Coming in nice and hot to try to give some offense. For Sprocket. Great defense by both teams as these teams are still stuck up there in the blocker box at the jam start line. The uh, Humboldt pivot is catastrophe going back to that, back to that, what is that called? Penalty box? Yeah, that's a penalty box. And we do have, it looks like a lead jammer being announced. But being Holly Seidel from that. Duke City, but she's got to go back to re-enter legally. We're now at turn three in the front. We've got some more exchanges in the penalty box between blockers. 
But yeah. with that call off, that is able to release Humboldt's pivot from the box. But Duke City, their pivot and one blocker is still in the box. Yeah, no points scored on that jam. Double zeros on the scoreboard. Yeah, it looked like there was just several times that that pack was just stretching out so much that, you know, the, the refs are having a call, you know, no pack. They, we do have rules. You do have to, you know, play within a certain part of the track. Looks like we had a team timeout being called by Humboldt. All right, we're going to start this jam with two Duke City skaters in the penalty box. Meep, meep, your jammer, and a it looks like a treu for Humboldt. And we've got, already got a fast-moving pack. We're already in turn two. We're not going to... We're actually past turn two now. But with that, Atreyu, with a nice little fancy footwork there, gets lead designation. Yeah, works their way around on the inside. Meep, meep, working Stop. hard against those humble blockers at the front, two on one. Somebody's being called for something. And knocked out to the inside. Meanwhile, Atreyu, full of four points. Yeah, this is why this you're focusing be. on that. I'm just going to get my points and keep skating. <laughs> And it looks like Meep Meep finally able to complete that initial pass. A little star stash. They won't know I'm the jammer if I'm not wearing the hat, right? Right. Kind of looking around, trying to get some track awareness, see what's going on. And was just told to get going. It's a big track. It is a big track. Lots of things are happening. We got a fast moving pack. Pack's moving almost as quickly as Atreyu right now. Yeah, Atreyu, your lead jammer in control here. Now it's starting to look more like a roller derby race versus yeah, that pack a full is, contact sport. <laughs> yeah, the pack is flying, and there's the end of the jam. That is the end of the jam. They were making some left turns, kind of just, you know, waving to the crowd, getting some good photo opportunities. 26 to 25 on the scoreboard in favor of Duke City, a close score as you would probably expect from two evenly matched teams. Duke City ranked 110 and Humboldt 111. So we are going to have a fantastic game here for our second game of the last day of Dust Devil. It has been a fantastic tournament so far. We've had some great games. This is another great game. And we've got not Hottie Box out there for Humboldt. And we've got Bo Derelict out there for Duke City. Yeah. Both facing some strong tripods. Yeah, Duke City trying some offense against the Humboldt blockers at the back of the pack. Oh, boy. oh, we've got a penalty to the Humboldt Jammer. It looks like it's a high block penalty, a high block penalty to the Humboldt Jammer. So we've got an advantage here for Duke City ahead on the scoreboard and looking to increase that lead. The pack is all strung out as Humboldt tries to hold back. Ouch! That is knocked to the outside, being recycled back to turn two. Yeah, nice hit there by Barium to knock out that Duke City jammer. Gotta love Derby and all the pun names. And that was a good penalty kill right there on Humboldt's part, waiting for their jammer to get back out of the box. And there it is, Bo Derelict with that no pack call. She manages to get out and get lead jammer. That was that was some hard work getting that lead designation with a minute 15 gone on this jammer clock. Some whistles are happening. Some people are being sent to the box. Yeah, Bo Derelict manages to make her way through the Humboldt blockers. Four more points for the Muñecas Muertas. You just like saying that name. I do. I love saying it. It's a great name. Hot box working hard against two Duke City blockers. Oh my goodness. Going up against Puns of Steel, and it looks like we have another penalty to the humble jammer hot box sent to the hot box. I see what you did there. And there's the end of the jam. So some things happened. There's a lot so happening. There's a lot of whistles, a lot of penalties, but only four points scored for each team. So we still got. Duke City leading by 130 to Humboldt's 29. We've got 16 minutes and 27, 20 seconds left. And both jammers are in the penalty box. So what happens? I think the, uh, there's a black hole explosion and we all die. 
You really do not want to answer any rough questions no, this we'll, weekend. We'll have a jammer soon enough. Here we go. Hot box released from the penalty box so we can have roller derby. And Bo Derelict also released from the penalty box. Ouch. Hot box flying into that pack. And they are going to be whistled off for a low block penalty. Ouch. Jammer penalty troubles for the Redwood Rollers early in this game. Bo Meanwhile, Bo Derelict still trying to get through for lead jammer status. Being recycled back between turns one and two. Duke City sends another blocker to the penalty box. And Bo Derelict going it alone against the humble defense. Trying to do an effective penalty kill. They yeah, almost made it. Yeah, Duke City trying to bridge this thing out a bit, but it is rough sliding for Bo Derelict against all four blockers for Humboldt. I mean, being a jammer myself, that is, that is something that's rough when you're trying to push against four other humans. Yeah, now they're getting a little bit of help out there. there. Looks but, like Skillalore, the captain, trying to offer some offensive assistance. But Hotbox has been released from the penalty box at the front of the pack. Is able to make out of their initial pass. Bo Derelict still working hard because they both jam the last jam and they're jamming again. It seems like a lot of jamming to me. I don't really know, but it seems like a lot. Oh, it seems like a lot. I mean, us announcers, we don't know much. We know some, but not much. But it sounds like a lot. Sounds like a lot. Sounds like maximum effort today. <laughs> Hashtag. Bo Derelict being held back at the rear of the engagement zone by a trio of Humboldt blockers. Things are pretty much at a standstill here in the apex between turns one and two. There's some bridging happening as the pack is stretched out, but Hotbox is able to make it out for four points. I believe that's the only, only points put up on the board for that jam. So we've had a lead change. We've got Humboldt with 33 to Duke City's 30. The, uh, the officials are signaling that we have an official review coming up. I'm pretty sure... Humboldt calling for it. I'm going to need more caffeine before this is done. Uh, All right, so that official review, Duke City was looking for a failure to reform penalty against uh, Humboldt. The call on the track stands, and they're going to lose that official review. They wanted to overturn the failure to return call. Fair enough. Either way, they did not retain. You're always getting failure to returns. Me? Them? Everybody? Okay. <laughs> so with that, they do not retain their official review. And we have some jammers out there for the teams. I believe we got two legit. Oh, gosh. We did get a track cut. So being sent to the penalty box. Who else do we have out there? There's some skaters out there. They're doing some things. It's this hard-hitting analysis that I love about your announcing style. Some things have happened. I might eventually catch up with it. So Duke City does have a jammer out there, we promise, and they are pushing against a tripod. Um, it is Power Jam to Duke City. There we go. I caught up. See? See? You just got to give me a second. And Too Legit is released from that penalty box and is, re is recycled to the back. And recycled to the back again. Pack... And there you have it. That would be 10-13. Holly, Holly Seidel making her way through for Duke City. And they call off the jam right away. 30-33 to 33 on the scoreboard in favor of the Redwood Rollers. We got Sprocket Rocket for Humboldt and Bamf for Duke City. Yeah, let's just get that out of the way. Just automatically name the jammers. That's good. Penalty box is clear. So we got a full complement of blockers for both teams. Everybody's having a cuddle party on the jammer line. Looks like a low block penalty being called to cast catastrophe. Meanwhile, we've got lead jammer for Duke City. Sprocket Rocket still trying to make her way through turn number two.
Looks like we got a forearm call to Duke City's blocker. Banff being recycled to the inside, back to turn two. Yeah, working hard at the back up against that trio of humble blockers. Hit out to the outside, comes back in clean, now to the inside. I really appreciate this team reducing, reusing, and recycling. It's always important, helps the environment, and makes for some good derby. Recycle jammers whenever you can, absolutely. They go right in the blue bin. And look at that, Sprocket Rocket, while we're distracted, makes it out. Banff being held back and hit to the outside, calls off the jam. Zombie, Stardust, Nacho, Amiga, and Castastrophe, the trio of Humboldt blockers, forcing that call off. I learned that from you. <laughs> and it looks like we've got me for Duke City with a trio for Humboldt having another... Now I'm just really excited to say cuddle party again at the jammer line. I really like saying cuddle party now. Try to work on their That's defensive awesome. strategies. And here we go, Atreyu and Meep doing their thing at the back of the pack. Meep takes the outside line and gets lead jammer, Humboldt lead jammer. That's Atreyu. That's Atreyu, oh, Meep is you. Duke City. Thank you. It was my day to babysit you, so I'll, I'll help you out. Nice. We got the penalty box clear, so we get full complement of blockers. 33 to 33 on the scoreboard as it stands. That's a lot of threes. Looks like we got some recycling going on. Yeah, Meep sent all the way to the back. Trying to work their way around mod behavior. And a Treyu. Treyu making it through that tripod with Meep being sent to the penalty box on a illegal contact. Illegal contact? Yeah. yeah, it looks like some kind of an illegal contact penalty for Meep. I play the sport. You think I'd learn the hand signals. But a Treyu coming back around for another four points. Yeah, you probably just never get penalties. <laughs> you for sure know that's not true. But I do appreciate it when you call me lead jammer, so it's fine. All right, so a Treyu working solo here in a power jam situation. And Up at the front. Getting stretched out, but able to make it through. Yeah, they slip around Kells Inferno to complete that scoring pass. Four more points for Humboldt. Four more points. Four more points. Meanwhile, Meep going up against all four Humboldt blockers at the front. And that is, that is hard to do. And there is the end of the jam. Nice work. So that was a 16-point jam for a trail. I think that's the largest jam so far this game. Uh, Thanks, Joe. Thanks for doing your job. That takes Humboldt to 49 and it holds Duke City at 33. And it looks like we've got some jammers out there. Who are out there? I can't see. Looks like Bo Derelict is out there jamming for Duke City. And P.K. Rowland. First time out for P.K. Rowland. Yep. And they get lead jammer status. P.K. Rowland lead jammer. Bo Derelict still facing some defense here on the straightaway as P.K. Rowan comes around for their first scoring pass. Yeah, robust blocking there at the back of the pack by Duke City. And there it is, four more points. P.K. Rowan makes it through. But Bo Derelict about a quarter track behind. Hoping to sneak in a few points, but is unable to as P.K. Rowling calls off yeah, that jam. That is a heads-up play by the Humboldt jammer to call off the jam. Extending the lead by 20 to Humboldt. And we've got two legit for Humboldt. That was a very fast 20-point lead right there. I think it only took them two jams to do that. Oh, we got a quick official timeout being called on the track. Stand by, everybody. Yeah, so, all the volunteers that it takes to make a big tournament like the Dust Devil happens, thanks very much. Tucson Roller Derby always works super hard to put this thing on and do a great job of it. Yeah, shout out to Helenati. Helenati, Mystery Meat, who else do we got? Pariah Carey. 
I mean, it's insane. It, it is absolutely unimaginable how much work they put in. All right, this jam starting with the Humboldt Jammer in the penalty box. P.K. Rowland beginning in the penalty box. That must have been what that official timeout was about. They got that straight, and now lead jammer Holly goes Seidel. to Duke City. Yeah, Holly Seidel, the only jammer on the track as it stands. Holly pushing that last blocker out of play and is released for that four points. But PK Rowland has been released from the box and they're gonna see what they are able to achieve this jam. Yeah, penalty box now clear. We've got all of our roller derby people where they're supposed to be, which is on the track. Holly Seidel pushed all the way to the back of the pack as PK finishes up their initial pass. And there it is. But Holly Seidel says, nay, nay, I'm going to take my four points and send you back to the bench with none. And with that, YouTube is talking to us. They said we're doing really great. HR is doing a good job calling the pack. Somebody else is on the edge of their seat. All right, it looks like the official review has come to its natural conclusion. Uh, it looks like Humboldt was looking for a late hit penalty to uh, the jammer. And they did not get it. That no call is going to stand on the track. No more Both official, official reviews. reviews out of the way here early in the first half. But do they get a new one in the second half? They do get a new one. They say, hey, we're going to reset. It's shiny. They give it a little spit shine. Good to go. So who's out there on the track right now? We got Bam. Well, oh, everybody is out there because the penalty box is clear. Good job. Oh, and just as you say that, mm -hmm. a Duke City blocker is being sent to I, the penalty box. I am the jinx. Looks like Sprocket Rocket jamming for Humboldt. And Bam, for the nice little side surf move, is able to get past that last blocker. But Sprocket Rocket with lead says, I'm going to call it. Well, that's your agony of Thank you very much. <laughs> Induce an agony in that penalty box. I've been looking for a reason to say that roller derby name all day. And I just stole it and from you. And you totally took it away, yeah. And she's waving at us from the box. Remember, they do not have cookies in the penalty box. So you don't want to go there. That is a common misconception. No kittens to pet either. So with that, we have a tray you out on the jammer line for Humboldt with Meep. Meep, Meep jamming for Duke City. And Humboldt is sending a blocker to the box. Again, there's no kittens to pet, no cookies to be had. But with that, Meep does get lead designation when a Treyu is being sent to the box for a track cut. Well, this is a great opportunity for Duke City. They are behind on the scoreboard. So we'll see what they can make of this advantage with a power jam happening right now. Meep stretching that last blocker to the out of play and is giving the good old keep on going. You have a power jam. Yep, she slips around mod behavior at the front of that engagement zone to complete the pass. But Atreyu is released from that penalty box. Looks like they're going to do a little bit of a four wall defensive in the back for them. Meep Meep still working hard against three humble blockers at the front. And it looks like Atreyu manages to get through and complete their pass. With a little star stash, going to be returning their star to their helmet. And Meep decides to call off the jam. We're also getting a shout out to the camera work by Mr. Jaws himself behind the camera between the two team boxes. Really stepped up the game. We're in high definition. We've got different camera angles. Technology, am I right? Am I right? And also, shout out to Blue Raccoon from the Molly Morbids from TJ Hunter. So there you go. And now back to the Derby. We have two legit on the jammer line for Humboldt. Yeah, and Bo Derelict out there jamming for Duke City. Some offense being supplied out there by number nine, Kells Inferno, trying to help her teammate make it through. But both of them facing some very strong tripods. Yeah, nice stout defense out there by both teams. 
Bo Derelich working at the front of the engagement zone against the humble blockers. And they are swallowed back up into the pack. Stretching beyond turn two, almost into turn three. Good. 40 seconds gone on this jammer clock, and now we have lead designation going to Too Legit with Humboldt. Yeah, that was tough going on that initial pass for Too Legit. Now, Nacho Amiga hits Bo Derelict out to the outside. They're going to have to recycle all the way to the back. And Too Legit trying to do some fancy footwork on that outside line. All the line. roller derby is going the wrong way. What's happening? That's called anti-derby direction. It happens. Are we rewinding? We are rewinding. We're rewinding. We're, we're, we are resetting. And again, both, both jammers having some difficulties with these tripods. Yeah, too legit. Getting a little bit of offensive help out there by their pivot. Rotten Tula Core. I like that name. I like all their names today. It's, it's very good, good. Must be a roller derby thing. It is a roller derby thing. I mean, we do have puns of steel. Wow. Jammers too legit tiptoes around the apex and makes it through on that pass. That was close. Bo Derelict still working on their initial with only... 13 seconds left on this jammer clock. This jammer thing looks hard. It's very difficult. Being in the box, I mean, roller derby in general looks difficult, but being a jammer, trying to push against four other humans. And there it is, the end of the jam. And with that, Humboldt puts seven on the board, bringing them to 60. And with Duke, Duke City's 49, with only about 30 seconds left on this period clock, but it looks like we'll have just enough time for maybe one more jam. Come on, squeak one in there. Sprocket Rocket jamming for Humble, and it looks like Holly Seidel out there for Duke City. Cuddle party. Cuddle party at the jammer line. <laughs> and lead jammer, Duke City. Holly Seidel makes it through. Holly getting some directives from her bench. I think good advice is always a good idea. It's very helpful. Duke City sending a blocker to that penalty box. Yeah, Killer Queen sent to the sin bin. I really like that name, Killer Queen. It's one of my favorite Queen songs right there. Uh-oh, looks like another blocker. No? No, changed right. their minds. Come on back. Both jammers are out, with Holly Seidel having that lead jammer designation. Being told to go ahead and run it, and puts another four points up on the board, but so does Rocket Rocket. And Killer Queen being released from that penalty box. And Holly Seidel go ahead, went ahead and called that after getting three points. The Humboldt not putting up any. So that was 11-point jam to Duke City, bringing them to 60. A four-point jam to Humboldt, bringing them to 64. And I believe we are at halftime, sir. That's what they call it. We're at halftime. And they are. There they go. All's well with the world. All right, it looks like the second half is going to get underway with Humboldt one blocker down. That's their pivot. Yep, Bianca Swaga. We've got a Treyu on the oh, jammer line exciting. for um, Humboldt and oh. Meep for Duke City. And we've got five meep. seconds. Meep, meep. And with that whistle, we're off and running on this first jam of the second half. Formation. Four three pack advantage to Duke City. But Humboldt is working hard. But Meep does get a lead designation. Yeah, Treyu with some fast feet on the inside line manages to complete their initial pass. Doing a little star stash, and Atreyu coming up for a scoring pass. With Meep getting four points on the board, Atreyu hit to the inside, being recycled back to turn two. Yeah, Treyu in a bit of trouble there at the front, going solo against all four of the Duke City blockers. That's not a, much offensive help there. It's called a four wall. At least that's what we call call it. So it's a four How wall. About a quartet. A quartet. Oh, 
a Treyu being sent to the penalty box on a forearm, I believe. Yeah, forearm penalty to the Humboldt Jammer. So now we've got a power jam to Humble or uh, to Duke City. Let me get the correct team name. Score all tied up at 64 right now. And Meep Meep looking to take the lead. Trying to stretch that pack out. Get those last blockers out of play. Yeah, Meep Meep and Nacho Amiga going at it at the front of the engagement zone. And having to be released, Meep, with a very hard fought four points. Shout out to Nacho Amiga, fighting till the bitter end. But a tree, it has been released from that penalty box. That Xfinity Rollercon penalty box. That'll be the name for it now. And that jam has come to its natural conclusion. Let's see, let's see what the points are. So Duke City putting up 11 points, bringing them to 71 with Humboldt's four points, bringing them to 68. We got a shout out on the YouTubes. Shout out to the announcers, keeping, keeping Knife Dance entertained. Thank you, Knife Dance. All right, Bo Derelict and two legit, your jammers. Humboldt with one blocker in the box to start. However, they're gonna have some company here as a penalty to Duke City. Harley Darlin headed to the box. With two legit out on lead designation, but Bo Derelict about a half track behind finishes their initial pass. It was a little spin hot move. Too legit, puts four points up on that board. Yeah, nice job out there by the Humboldt Jammer. But Bo Derelict Stop. says, you know what? I'm just gonna yeah. run by this real quick and match that four points right quick. Yeah, answers right back with their own scoring pass. Corners. Corners. Pack moving just a little bit. Blockers trying to stop the jammers. Is that is the goal of roller derby. Too legit hit to the outside. Corners. Recycled back to the jammer line. Bo Derelict came out of that with four points. Yeah, nice work by Killer Queen from Duke City. Hits out the jammer and forces and that call off. Corners. Corners. So that's eight each on that one. So still keeping... Duke City ahead by three points. Corners and lines. Six three minutes four. left on the second half clock. All right, looks like we've got an oh. official timeout, I believe, being called. Oh, with that rolling whistle, <laughs> it means we're ready to go. That always happens. Another party happening at the jammer line with PK Rowan and is that Holly Seidel? That is Holly Seidel. Yep, Holly Seidel. For Duke Seidel. City. Forming up into a tripod. Whatever Tucson did, it worked. The Holly Seidel is with the from the box, Seidel and trans. with that, Holly Seidel is out as your lead Honda jammer. Yeah, Holly Seidel makes pass. short work of that pack. Give for a second. Uh, PK Rowan doing a uh, little star oh, smash, like making their way around it's, it's for it's their first scoring pass. But Holly Seidel stretching that pack out, able to make it through for four points. Oh, yeah, they took a hit at the very end of the engagement zone from Nacho Amiga. To no avail. You love that name. I'm forcing it in now, I know, I'm sorry. We've got two of Duke City's blockers in that penalty box. Yeah, this abbreviated pack may give PK Rowland a chance to do their thing. Let's see what happens. Last line of defense out there, it's Kells Inferno. And there goes PK, four points. And Holly Seidel takes a look towards the bench and says, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and call this because unfortunately Duke City was able to get three more points in that jam over Duke City, uh, over Humboldt. With 25 minutes left, we got Duke City at 86 and Humboldt with 80. Sprocket Rocket is out there for Humboldt with Bayonk. I'm going to be pronouncing it Rocket. Rocket? With the E-T-T-E -T -T -E yeah. at the end. Yeah, all right. I am Fair from enough. France, however, so. That's how, that's how they do in the good old French. And speaking of Sprocket Rocket, they are your lead jammer for Humboldt. It looks like we've got some blocker in the penalty box, Dosey Do, while Sprocket Rocket makes it out for four points. Yeah. But Banff is right behind them. Right. 
Brockett Rockett, your lead jammer. All right, flurry of penalties. In the driver's seat for the jam. They can stop it whenever they want to. Once again for North Carolina. Bam with a fancy little spin move with that last Humboldt block. Three blockers on the Four points. No jamming. And bam, with that exclamation point, says, here's my four points. Yeah, gets around Rotten to LaCour at the front of the engagement zone. Nice job. Taking advantage of Sprocket Rocket and not calling it until now. Yeah, and gets a nice 3-0 jam for her team, keeping Duke City off the scoreboard. I feel like that. we need some clarification. Should we be yelling, bam, because there is an exclamation point, or would that be rude? No, oh, I don't know. I think we can do that. Bam! So now we got 94. Feels good. It does feel good. Feels good. Duke City 94 to Humboldt's 91. 23 minutes left. We have a trio out on that jammer line joining the cuddle party with Meep for Duke City. Penalty box is vacant for the time being. Trey, you having a difficult time with this four wall here in the back. This little... Bam, struggling at the front of that pack, and it looks like, oh no. Bam, whistled off of the track. So the Duke City Jammer... That's Meep. Oh, I'm sorry, Meep. Bam was the last one. Got meep. it. Meep, Meep. Looks like a high block penalty to Meep, Meep. But a trio being sent on a track cut. So they will take a seat in that penalty box. And then Meep Meep will be released. Little Jim or Dosey Do. You feel shame and then you get free. Then you get free. Shame, cling cling, shame. It's a microcosm of life. It is. There's a lot of life references when it comes to Derby. Pack being stretched out beyond turn two. Meep working hard to get past the last two Humboldt. Blockers and is successful. With an attempted apex jump. A Treyu is recycled back. Meep working towards the front of the engagement zone and is released and gets four points. 98 to 91 on the scoreboard <laughs> as it stands in favor of Duke City. Great scoring opportunities for both teams in this extended jam. Yeah, because there is no lead. So this will reach its natural conclusion. <laughs> Little backwards toe stop work from Meep on that outside line. <laughs> With a tray, you making it out of the pack for four points. And that Zero. Is... Oh, that was the initial pass. So Atreyu took almost that entire time to get their initial. Wow. But got it in there. That's what you call defense. But Meep Meep putting eight points on the board. Duke City has passed the century mark with 102. All right, taking the line for Humboldt. Looks like Hot Box and Bo Derelict for the Duke City Muñecas Muertas. For North Star. 126. Penalty box is clear. And it looks like a team timeout by Humboldt. Wow. Let's take a break, everybody. Well, the teams talk it over. 102 to 91 on the scoreboard in favor of Duke City. Game number two, day number three. Dust Devil almost over. Can you believe it? I can. Time passes. It happens. So I don't sad. want it to end, though. This is good. I took vacation for this. So I could come enjoy three days of the Derbs. And it's been fantastic. It's been exciting. Points have been scored. Lead jams have been designated. Penalties have been assessed. Things have been written down by our wonderful NSO. A lot of writing going on. Yeah, there has been a lot of writing today. Everybody's had legible writing, I hope. Yeah, I'm checking Body the statistics releasing. right now, and it looks like 23 gallons of ink have been used to write all of the writing today. 17 bags of ice. And a partridge. No, we're and a saddle partridge. Trip you know, how many pieces have been okay. rest eaten? I have had a lot. Did, uh, no, they're working hard. Did you get Bo Derelict out on the jammer line? Yeah, and Hot Box for right. Humboldt. Here we go. Box is clear. Jam is on, and Hot Box, your lead jammer. 
Taking that inside line. Says, oop, it's open. I'm running. At Goodbye. The that, Jan, so Bo Derelich still working so out the front of the pack, facing a very tough Humboldt <laughs> tripod, being knocked to the outside. The hot box says, you know what? You guys deal with that. I'm going to score some more points. Yeah, hot box slips around killer queen up there in the apex. Four points. Because she's a, she's a killer queen. Absolutely. And Hotbox running that inside line again for another four, which brings them to eight this jam. Yeah, Harley Darlin trying to knock Hotbox out at the front of the pack. No luck. Hotbox working on that last blocker for Duke City, able to make it through. That puts 12 points on the board for them. Bo Derelict still working hard against this very tough Humboldt tripod. Being knocked to the outside and recycled back. Yeah, mod behavior knocking Bo Derelict out there in turn number four. Forces are all the way back. And Duke City sending a blocker to the box on a multiplayer penalty. Star pass complete by Duke City, handing it off to their pivot. That is Kells Inferno. And by the time I could find their name, <laughs> that jam concluded with 16 point jam to Humboldt. I believe that's a lead change. I believe we've had a lead change. Math would tell us that. Yeah. Math would tell us. I'm not good at it, but I believe we've had a lead change. 102 to 107 in Humboldt's favor. Swear Marie. Marie sitting there just taking a little taking a little breather in the penalty box. You, you look very at home over there, Marie. <laughs> it's only been her second time. She's her correcting you. Okay. <laughs> and in that time, too legit makes it out of the pack with Holly Seidel right behind her. And with that call off, looks like Holly Seidel able to sneak two points in on that late call off. Yeah, nice work by Holly Seidel skating hard through the four whistles to grab a couple of points on that pass. Because she's too legit. Too legit to quit. Sure. Nailed it. And I believe I believe you wanted Venom, your shirt. We must give some attention to your shirt today. Trying to represent. You're so metal. So with that, we've got BAM! on that jammer line with and a sprocket rocket. But sprocket rocket is out and lead designation. Yeah, meanwhile, Banff having a tough time there at the front against, it looks like every humble blocker possible. And with Swear and Marie, she says, I've had enough of this penalty box, I'm leaving. But unfortunately, her jammer, Banff, goes into that Xfinity RollerCon penalty box. Yep, called off for a cutting penalty, so a nice opportunity here for Humboldt. They are ahead 115 to 104 right now, looking to stretch that lead here in the second half. And slips right around that last blocker for four points at Sprocket Rocket. Trying to do a little bit of line work there, but is pushed back and is recycled about a good 50 feet. Yeah, Killer Queen dragging that jammer all the way back. Continue. Now we're in the 70 feet. Humboldt sends a blocker to the box. And Bamp takes advantage of that and uh, crushes it that straight through that tripod. No, that's, that's a term. That's, that was worldwide. And uh, more bad news for Duke City. It looks like Bamp being whistled off for a high block and then uh, an additional penalty, an insubordination call, so a full minute. That is crushing. Because, yes, if you are called on a penalty and you don't immediately leave the track, they will give you extra time. You are, uh, you have to leave in an expeditious manner. Expeditious. I like that word. That's a good word. That's a very big word. That is a Saturday word, and today is only Sunday. Good job. All right, we are about ready to get started with this next jam. It looks like number 10, Bamf, is in the penalty box. So we've got a power start for Humble. Trey, you the only jammer on the track. Because we have to have at least one. Can't have roller derby without a jammer. Stretching that pack all the way around, turns one and two. 
Atreyu is released for lead jammer designation. That'll make the YouTube fans excited. Ooh. We have somebody watching from Britain right now. Uh -oh. oh! In the pack, the jammer from North Attempted Star. apex jump, unfortunately, was unsuccessful. Yeah, the penalty box is doing brisk business with two blockers and the jammer for Duke City Four. doing time. A little cuddle party in the penalty box. Is that what's happening? Remain in this second half of the first bout. Yeah, you tell you. Keep going. From the YouTube. But Duke City's... Jammer is released from the box, trying to make some quick work of this four wall in the back of the engagement zone. Yeah, makes it around Eiffel Terror, four points. Hey, look, there's your French references. We. Oui. We. Oui. And Atreyu is still coming around for points. Already put eight up on the board. But Bayam is released from the front of that engagement zone and ready to try to score some points. Yeah, Atreyu getting some nice help out there from Zombie Stardust, the captain of the Redwood Rollers, giving some offense. I believe that's a Bowie reference. Yeah, we got somebody watching from the UK. Shout out to Mojo and that call off. Yay, PK. There we go. Now Duke City's starting to represent on the YouTube. So we've got two. Duke City's not taking that land down. No, they're not. So we got two Vajet on the jammer line with Meep for Duke City. One blocker starting in the box for Duke City. So a small advantage out there for Humble, and they take advantage with lead jammer for the Supernovas. Uh, and quick. that is a hella naughty with the star for the saddle tree. Seems wrong if you don't. <laughs> Thank you for that confirmation, Atreyu. Appreciate it. And with that, we have a star stash. Duke City's jammer getting out of the pack. 135 to 104 on the scoreboard in favor of the Redwood Rollers, and that is the end of our jam. You called that too soon, 139. They did get four points. Timing is critical. It is very critical. It's critical, and we usually fail at it, so it's fine. I'm being abandoned. Who, who's trusting weirdo on the on the microphone by herself? So we've got PK rolling at the jammer line for Humboldt with who is that? Twenty four. Smack, Kilbury. Smack, smack out jamming, oh no. but is having to take a slight break for about thirty seconds in that penalty box. Yeah, Smack sent to the penalty box for a cutting penalty. That leaves PK all alone on there. Another inside. four points. Don't, don't leave me again. I got very confused. It got weird, I know. Got real weird. And we got PK coming around turn number two. Trying to see what points that they can add to their team score to keep a hold of this lead. Uh, PK slips around Kells Inferno. Four more points. They are jamming unopposed with the Duke City Jammer in the penalty box. But Duke City's jammer has been released from the box. Coming to the straightaway. But makes some quick yeah. footwork. And it makes it out of the pack to complete their initial pass. Yeah, Zombie Stardust with some nice offense again. Springs the jammer. Four points. We've got just under 12 minutes left in this second half. And Redwood Rollers are extending their lead. 151 to Duke City's 104. They're back on the track. It looks like we're ready to get started. Bo Derelict will be jamming for Duke City. And somebody. Hotbox for Humboldt. With a full complement of blockers. No one in the penalty box. I'm proud of everyone out there. I'm Good work. Keep it clean, kids. Proud of everyone. Everybody's doing great. A little bit of a traffic jam at the jammer line. But Hotbox is being sent to the... Penalty box for a forearm. Got a little too enthusiastic on that pass. And Lee Jammer goes to Duke City. Bo Derelict. Duke City is behind on the scoreboard. They could use some points here. And now we've got a blocker for Humboldt in the box as well. The table is set for Bo Derelict. But unfortunately, 
barely so, fun and exciting say, things happening huh? on the track I already. Think I put too much pressure People on I started <laughs> with the star you need before to calm they down. even hit turn one, you and there's the star pass oh, two. Just drink your uh, water, everything will be fine. So with that, hot box is really from the pet. And is now going to try to make some quick work on giving their initial Yeah, one point on the first, you have two points on the second. But Killer Queen, not making it easy. So derelict being released from that penalty box. Swear and Marie doing a great job blocking up front with Harley Darlin. But Hotbox able to push those last two blockers to out, being out of play. But there is no lead jam, so this is going for the full time of this jam. And Hotbox says, you know, I might have sat in the penalty box for a second, but I'm going to come out and I'm going to score some points. It looks like Bo Derelict is still working very hard, pushing that tripod, very solid tripod, at the front of the engagement zone, forcing them to have to bridge off and then be released with a little star stash. And that's the natural conclusion of this jam. All right, it looks like the humble Redwood Rollers are calling for an official review. So they're going to huddle up in the middle of the track and figure out some stuff. All right, well, we got the word on the official review. Humboldt was looking for a cut call on the Duke City Jammer, and it looks like they got it. Bo Derelict is in the penalty box, so they're going to retain that official review. And Atreyu is going to have a power start. Yeah, sharp work Humboldt. over there by the coaching staff of the Humboldt Redwood Rollers. Humboldt trying to take advantage of the little bit of offense that they're getting, but being recycled to the inside. Taking advantage of lane four, having about two inches, takes that and gets lead designation. derelict coming out of the penalty box and going right back in for a cutting call that's interesting illegal re-entry yeah she uh, returned from the penalty box illegally so back she goes We've got a Treyu, big smile on their face, saying, you know what? I'm having a good time. I'm scoring some points. Isn't it lonely being the only jammer out there, though? Uh, it kind of is. Like you would want another jammer to hang out with? No, probably not. And with an apex jump on turn four, Treyu puts another four on the board. Now the internet is really going to get crazy. I mean... In 35 seconds, the internet is going to blow up. The internet is going to go insane. Over there in turn number three. And shout out to our medic crew. We've done a fantastic job this weekend. We've got a little bit of a cuddle party on that jammer line because these blockers are just ready to do some work. Penalty right. box is clear. Sprocket Rocket being knocked to the inside and recycled back to the straightaway. Go ahead, Jeff. <laughs> Sorry. You took the words out of my mouth. Both jammers having a heck of a time here as they have finally made it to turn number one. But bam, makes it out of turn two with lead designation. Trying to hopefully, trying to make up some points. For Duke City. Yeah, Duke City trailing on the scoreboard. They could use some points here. Banff is going to do their best okay. to try and close that gap. Goes up again. Oh, and there goes Banff past that last blocker. Mod behavior knocked down. Putting four points on the board. But uh, update, Humboldt's chairman, Sprocket Rocket, has been sent to the penalty box. Right. Not sure why. I wasn't paying attention again. 
Banff is out there on a power jam now, so it is up to Humboldt to try to stop the bleeding. And there they go, Banff for four more points. With some sweet offense from Swearin Marie. Yeah, Duke City looking to close the gap here, still in a power jam situation. Spocker Rocket being released from that penalty box. And four more points for Duke City, and again to the penalty box goes the Humboldt Jammer, Sprocket Rocket. Oh, I don't know. Well, she's in the penalty box. They did something they weren't supposed to, and they went to the penalty box. And with that bam for another four points, bringing that to a 16-point jam so far as it reaches its natural conclusion. Natural conclusion. The time ran out of that jam clock. So 16 points to Duke City, bringing them to 121. Now we've got a 52 point game. So an update on the scoreboard, something new. If you see a little plus sign next uh, underneath the or right where the official review goes, it means that they retained their official review, and Jeff Mann is losing his mind over it right I, now. I love the technology you kids are using. Meep Meep out there jamming for Duke City. But Sprocket Rocket has been released from the penalty box. Yeah, Sprocket Rocket starting the jam in the box, but we've got lead jammer for Meep Meep, Duke City, looking to get back in the game and close the gap. And again, the Humboldt Jammer goes to the penalty box. Sprocket Rocket returns to the sin bin. You don't see that very often with a Jammer getting a multiplayer, but sometimes it happens when they attempt to take a shirt whip off of one of their players and it blocks an opposing player. So it does happen. It's rare, but it does happen. Meep Meep is going to try to take advantage of it, and they do, slipping around that last blocker, Nacho Amiga. There you go, you got it in. And with now getting the pack moving a little bit, Meep Meep takes advantage and says, Meep Meep, I'm out, I'm out of here. We've got about four minutes to go, a 40 point differential between these teams and Meep Meep looking to close the gap even more, <laughs> ouch, hit hard to the inside. With a Duke City blocker going into the penalty box on a low block call. Yeah, Harley Darlin whistled off the track. But Sprocket Rocket finishing their initial pass. But Meet Me calls that, putting another 12 points. Excuse me, uh, putting 15 points up on the board for Duke City, bringing them 136 to Humboldt's 173. Appropriate song for the roller derby. Little Devo action. And we're off and running on jam number 16. Yeah, Duke City starting with one blocker in the penalty box. And Humboldt takes advantage of that with two legit getting yeah. lead designation. Yeah, two legit takes advantage of that abbreviated pack, gets lead. Ouch! They are hit out hard to the outside, though. Nice work out there by number 206, Skelelor, the captain of Duke City. But with a nice spin move coming out of turn number two, that is Holly Seidel with four points on the board. And too legit coming around for another four. It's gonna go ahead and let it run. Oh, it looks like puns of steel sent to the penalty box, giving a small pack advantage to Humboldt. <laughs> too legit being hit to the inside, being recycled back to that jammer line. Holly Seidel pushing, so, working so hard against Humboldt's very strong tripod. 177 to 140 on the scoreboard in favor of the Redwood Rollers. Two minutes to play in this game. With too legit saying, you know what, I'm just going to keep throwing some points up here. All is well in the world. It's a good Sunday morning. Oh, excuse me, Sunday afternoon.
Now both teams showing strong tripods in the front and the back against these two jammers. Trying to get any inches that they can. Getting encouragement from their benches. But with that two inches on the outside line, makes it through for four points. And I think too legit called that as it was as it was ending anyway. All right. So with that, 12 points to Humboldt. All right, Duke City was looking for a forearm call to be called against the opposing jammer. However, the call on the track, the no call, is going to stand. So they had some discussion and then nothing happened. Is that the shorthand of it? Okay, cool. I like the shorthand. They tossed it over, they got it right. So with PK Roland taking the line for Humboldt here late in the game, and BAM will be out there jamming for Duke City. You, you said that incorrectly. It's BAM! 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 There's an exclamation point at the end of their name. So with just over a minute to left on this period clock, <laughs> the tripod defense on both teams staying strong. But it looks like Banff got a no pass, no penalty, was able to leave the pack, but does not have lead. You nailed it. DK took off their cover, however. But Humboldt has taken off their, pan, their uh, cover for a stash, so this will go the full two minutes. Bonus roller derby, people. No Bonus. extra charge. Bonus roller derby. All for the low, low price of just sitting in your seat. Banff being recycled to the inside here between turn three and four. With PK Rowan doing another star stash, but you have to have that helmet cover on to score points. So even though they passed everybody, they only received two points. But Banff keeping that cover on and putting up another four points. And this is getting interesting. I'm on the edge of my seat. Banff trying to make it through on the inside there in the back stretch. Now bounces out and is hit out of bounds. And we'll Being be forced all the way back to the back of that engagement zone. All the way back. All the way. But PK Rowan still working at the front against Duke City's tripod. But the pack is starting to move a little bit, so those tripods have been broken up. But that is it. With that rolling whistle. That brings us to the conclusion of this game. Unofficially, we have Duke City with 156, two Humboldt 190. I don't know about you, but that was some great derby. That is. That was some great derby, some great bantering with the internet. It's been a full day for me already, <laughs> and it's only 12.30. Only 12.30. And with that rolling whistle, we have an official final score of 156, Duke City, two Humboldt, 190. So come on out, give a little high five to these two teams. They fought hard, they did great. We're going to take about a half an hour, about 25 minute break, and we're going to be seeing who, who are we seeing? We'll be coming back with North Star and Happy Valley in just a few minutes, so stick around everybody. If you're here in the arena, head over, get yourself something to drink, check out the vendors, support Flat Track Roller Derby, buy t-shirts, buy stuff. And don't forget, you only got about two and a half hours left to buy those raffle tickets for the RollerCon MVP passes that will be announced at 3 p.m. So give us your money, you know you want to, and we will catch you later. This is Weirdo, I am done announcing for the day. Goodbye. Bye bye.